Here's our track by track on the brand new Barry Goodrow album. Of course, he's a former Boston guitarist. His new album is called Barry Goodrow's Engine Room, and we're featuring it today on Rock History Book. How far back, tell me about the people who were on it, and how far back did the impetus of this album start? Uh, the Engine Room includes Brian uh, Mace, who is our lead singer and keyboard player. You know, he uh, joined Orion the Hunter back in the 80s and was a member of RTC and we've worked together ever since. Uh, Tim Archibald uh, is a bass player. Uh, he was the bass player in RTC and we've continued to work together through the years. Brian introduced me to uh, Tony DiPietro. Uh, he plays drums on, uh, on the CD. And we have Mary Beth Mace, uh, Joni Sisatelli, and Terry Osoro on background vocals, and also lead vocals on the, on one tune. Our first record was in 2017. This one we started uh, about two years ago, and fortunately for us, we had most of the recording done before the uh, COVID thing hit. So luckily we were able to finish it uh, pretty much online. So was that Mary that sings lead on the other songs? Uh, Mary Beth sings lead on um, The Camel's Back yeah. and on um, Edge of the Knife, all three girls take uh, turns. Love will lead the Love way. Love lead the way. Like, again, a nice rocker. It's very positive. Tell me about that too. Uh, well, that was kind of the idea. I mean, with this COVID thing over the last year and, uh, you know, all the negativity uh, in the media and all the political goings on. Uh, you know, we just wanted to have a positive, uplifting kind of song, and uh, hey, love will lead the way. <laughs> you know, when I first heard it, I remember going, okay, he's going to give me, you know, growing up in the 70s and 80s, you always had that great track in the beginning, you know, the rocker that'll give you a speeding ticket, job well done. <laughs> Okay, Las Vegas, that's another, I'm hearing big hair bands, another, you know, great power song. Tell me about that one. Well, actually, uh, this is a song that Brian and I wrote uh, several years ago for a, a movie soundtrack. It was supposed to be a movie uh, filmed in, in Las Vegas. It was kind of an underground fight movie. Uh, Mickey O'Rourke was supposed to be the lead. And I mean, it looked great. It looked like it was really going to happen. And then it just uh, fizzled. So... We decided to uh, resurrect the track and uh, we kind of stretched it out and put uh, a lot more solos and uh, uh, instrumental stuff in it. Nice rocket too. Yeah, word of the wise. I wasn't sure what you were, you know, I, I, in the beginning, just looking at the lyric, I'm going, well, you know, you've gone through your trials and tribulations in rock and roll. You could write a, a few books on that. That's another rock ballad. Tell me about that one. Well, you know, I really love the uh, 12 string guitar. I wanted to find a way to, to utilize that. And, uh, and you know, also, uh, you know, lyrically, um, it's kind of a, you know, looking over your shoulder kind of thing. Uh, you know, keep your eyes open. <laughs> Old number seven, another great driving song. Love the drums on that in the beginning. Yeah, rock on. It gets you going. Tell me about that one. Well, this is kind of funny the way this came together. Uh, you know, when I'm writing music, I, I usually use my telephone. And if, you know, if you uh, take a note, it'll uh, just add a number to it if you don't, you know, give it a title. So it just came up as number seven. So, you know, when Brian was working on lyrics, he said, okay, this is number seven. And he started working lyrics around that. And of course, old number seven is uh, Jack Daniels. So, okay, it's a drinking song. <laughs> Uh, Shade um, had a kind of a Boston-y intro, I found. Very catchy, loved the vocals. What about that one? 
Uh, yeah, great uh, ballad that uh, Brian wrote the, the lyrics for, and and uh, it really sets up kind of a uh, scene in your mind. Uh, you can almost imagine sitting under that uh, maple tree in the in a nice warm summer day, and you know, looking back over the past. Uh, yeah, that's uh, we uh, actually were able to play that uh, live back before the the COVID thing hit. It was a big hit. Our audience really loves that one. So rhythm won't stop. That was recorded live, right? Uh, yeah, kind of. No, actually, it's not. We uh, we we wanted to have a live feel to it, so we uh, Benny and the Jets all over again. <laughs> yeah, so something like that. So so uh, rhythm won't stop was actually on the Delta Goudreau CD, and we started doing it as a, a, a song live, and uh, you know, stretching it out a lot of long solos and so forth, and. You know, it always went over really well live, so we decided to add it onto the uh, onto the rocket and give it that that live feel, even though it isn't live. <laughs> well, it's okay. It adds to the song. That's why Elton John did it to Benny and the Jets. I mean, it added to the song. Campbell's back, another one. That one had a little zip, and it has that anthem, that big kind of anthony feel. Like, yeah, tell me about that too. Well, Campbell's back is the only song that we wrote during uh, COVID. Like I said, all the other songs we we had most of the recording done. Uh, this one we actually wrote uh, online over the phone. You know, Brian had a, a musical idea, and he ran it by me and I changed it up, sent it back. He sent it back out. Tim, the bass player, added something to it and went back and added vocals to it. And uh, Mary Beth Mace uh, sings lead on this one. We wanted to get way up in that high register. And, and you know, we were kind of yeah. looking for that, the early Led Zeppelin kind of kind of feel. I think we uh, accomplished it on that one. What they say, uh, you know, it's, it's another speeding ticket song. <laughs> that layered vocal is what I like. I like that. You know, that's one of the reasons I like Boston. I like a lot of bands like that. Well, this one uh, came across a really uh, cool cool riff I came up with. Well, my, in my mind, a really cool riff anyway. Oh. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it does have some interesting uh, cascading uh, harmonies in there that uh, gives it a little different feel. And the road, uh, you know, I listen to that and I'm going, you know, it brings me to a point of reminder of going, oh yeah, that's right, we don't do that anymore. I really want to do it. <laughs> Tell me about that one. Uh, well, that's our title cut. Um, you know, it kind of looks back on our, our times out on the road. Uh, you know, some of the uh, places mentioned in there are places uh, that we actually played. It uh, talks about Presque Isle, Maine, which if you're from this area, you, you realize 
Fresco, Maine is as far north as you can possibly go on the East Coast. It's like way, way up there. And, uh, you know, we went up there and played a couple of times and the, the crowd was great. They, they really enjoyed the heck out of it. And you know, it was kind of looking back over those uh, days bouncing around in the bus, which, uh, you know, the, the, the bus there, that, that's us uh, around the bus. <laughs> is, that, is that the actual bus, eh? No. This bus hasn't moved in uh, probably 20 years. <laughs> but it makes for a damn good album. It makes a great cover, yeah. <laughs> Come a time, a story tune, nice ballad. Uh, well, Come a time is one that uh, Brian started writing back uh, several years ago, and uh, we resurrected it and uh, kind of reworked it. Uh, you know, this one has kind of a Beatles influence. I, I was trying to get the uh, you know that George Harrison slide thing going in this one. I think we uh, I think we accomplished that. Love reprise to me. That's that song just t brings me on a on a journey. I hear a little Boston in that as well. Uh, what about that one? Well, it, it has the same lyrics as "Love Will Lead the Way," the opening tune. So we thought that was kind of a neat thing. Uh, you know, they're totally different songs, even though they have the same lyrics in the, in the chorus. So it's kind of you know full circle uh, from from the first song, and and you know there's there's a lot of uh, Instrumental stuff in that you mentioned the there's a long opening with a lot of keyboards and uh, of course a searing guitar solo in the middle and my favorite part is when it goes to the end and it, the key changes and it gets really up high. I love that part. <laughs> We'll have more from Barry coming up in a few days. Remember, he has a brand new album out. There'll be links in the description of this video where you can pick it up. Remember, make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, it's important to us, and share them on social media, and buy a Rocky Street Music t-shirt. It helps support our channel. 